Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we also open up magic from time to time. So now I'm going to open up this bad boy, a fourth edition booster pack. I'm super excited. Look at that. It is so cool. This is a Spanish fourth edition booster pack. It was sent to me by Ezra, a big fan of the channel. So big shout out to you, Ezra. Thank you so much. You also sent me another booster pack. That was actually this one. It is empty now. I opened it last week. So if you've missed that video, there's an info card popping up right now. So maybe you can check that out first or wait for the opening, check that out after. But that was a great booster. I was really happy with the rare because it's so playable, but I'm just not gonna say anything else about it because maybe you haven't seen that opening yet and you wanna check it out after this. So um, yeah, we're gonna open this booster. I'm hoping to find maybe the Mana Vault here. Lantex will be sweet, Sylvan would be sweet, but also just an iconic creature like Sheevan Dragon will be really nice. Ooh, so I'm gonna, gonna open it up. It is a bit of a fight. Let's see what's the best way to unravel this. Wow, this is a tough booster pack. This this pack wants to stay closed for sure. My goodness. Look at this, I've got all this off and still it doesn't want to open. You know what, I'm gonna get the scissors. You know, sometimes you've gotta do what you've gotta do. I'm gonna get the scissors. Let's go. That went kinda easy. So here we go, so we've got 15 cards. Ah, oh, smells fantastic. Um, let's see, these are the three uncommons. This should be the rare, so I'm gonna put the rare here. And we're gonna start, of course, with the common. So here we go. First common is a Marsh Gas, so a card from the dark, gives all creatures minus two, minus oh, an instant. And then we have Merc Dwellers, another card from the dark. So this is actually a zombie now, it's a two-two. When it attacks and isn't blocked, it gets plus two, plus O. Oh. So this card is pretty sweet if you combine it with Tannis' Wand, for example, you know, or in a zombie deck when you give it Swamp Walk and you your opponent has swamps because you play Evil Presence. So there, there are actually quite some nice ways of, uh, of using this card. And the next one, a Pearl Unicorn. So one white and two for this card originally from Alpha. And we've got a Bird Maiden. So Bird Maiden... It's so funny, Arabian Nights had some of the, let me show you really close, beautiful card, had some of the strongest creatures, but also creatures like Bird Maiden where you pay three mana for a one, two creature. And we're gonna turn the next one, a Pestilence. Yeah, Pestilence is, ooh, there goes the camera, a, bit, a little bit shaky. Pestilence is just so good. I, I won a game of EDH with Pestilence not too long ago, super strong card. And here we go, Amru Kitken. Again, a card that um, you can do funny things with it, right? If you if you pump it up or you put a blessing on it, uh, because it cannot be blocked by creatures with power greater than two. So obviously you can do some shenanigans with it, maybe play some crusades next to it. It can be quite nice. A card from Legends, I believe. Then we have Goblin Rock Sled. So Goblin Rock Sled, a 3-1 Goblin with Trample. So, you know, at first sight, this looks like really, really a really good card because it's two mana for a 3-1 Goblin with Trample, which is amazing stats for a Goblin. The problem here is that you cannot attack unless your opponent has a Mountain because you gotta get up the Mountain and slide off it. That's what the Goblin Rock Sleds do. So your opponent needs to have Mountains. So it could be a nice, you know, sideboard card in your deck. Or of course, if you play a, um, a Blood Moon, you can give your opponent Mountains and you can, uh, yeah kind of win it that way, which is pretty sweet. And then we have a Vampire Bats. Vampire Bats, a card that I think is quite playable if you put it next to a Bat Moon in an aggressive Mono Black Brew. This card, I believe, originally from uh, Legends is an 0-1 Flyer, and you can pay one black if plus one plus O, but you cannot do that more than twice. So you can make it a 2-1 Flyer. And if you also have a Bat Moon, it means it becomes a 3-2 Flyer, you know, and for just for one mana, that's uh, it's a lot of hitting power. Let me put that one here. Let's see that we can see all the cards. There we go. 
Ooh, still got three commons before we go into uncommon land. Okay, there's a disenchant. I'm really happy with this because it's so playable. So I can actually play with these in some of my decks. So disenchant, one white and one, of course, destroy target, enchantment or artifact. Absolutely bonkers. I believe maybe the most powerful common next to lightning bolt, in my opinion. Um, then we have flight, one blue to give target creature flying and enchant creature. Then we have, oh, we've got Holy Strength. So we can put a Holy Strength on the Kitkin and you kind of already have a combo going on, right? It's, it's quite nice. Let me put these cards here. Okay, now we're going to go into the Uncommon. So I think in the Uncommon territory, a Strip Mine would be phenomenal, would be fantastic. Another good card for me would be Counterspell. I would love a, a Swords to Plowshares. Just useful cards that I can play in my decks would be quite sweet. There's a wall of ice. Okay, very iconic. I used to play with this card quite a lot uh, when I was a young Timmy and just started playing Magic because I thought it's a lot of bang for your buck. You know, it's an 07 for one green two. The cool thing is about Richard Thomas's art, you can us usually see a mage trapped in the wall, right? And you can see that with almost all the walls by Richard Thomas. So check that art out. You know, Wall of Fire has that Wall of Air. It's pretty cool. The next one. And, ooh, this is cool, a Gloom. Listen, Gloom, I love it because this is, again, a playable card. So in my black decks, I play this in almost all my sideboards, right? It forces your opponent, if they play white, to pay three extra when they want to cast any white spell. So it's quite good as a sideboard card. Let me put the uncommons here. And the last uncommon of the bunch is a Brass Man, a Ombre de Laton. That's pretty sweet, the Ombre Man, the Brass Man. It's actually not too bad, I think. It's, it's one mana for a 1-3. It's better than the Wall of Wood. Card originally comes from the uh, Arabian Nights expansion. And now for the rare. Oh man, this is exciting stuff. So is it gonna be a Lantex, a Sylvan Library, maybe just a Sheevan Dragon or a Mana Vault? Here we go, boom! Oh, a Royal, sweet! That is so cool, a royal assassin. I love it. Assassino Real. Man, this is cool. Super playable, two black and one. I'm sure you know what it does. Great to combine this with Icy Manipulator. Tap, destroy target, tapped creature. This is just an, an, an all-star. This would be a super good pack back in the day. You would want to get cards like this. Everybody wanted to have like the, the best creatures of the game, right? Like royal assassin. Um, you know, they love the big creatures like Shivan, Dragon, Ma, Moti, Jin, but also these creatures were very sought after back in the day. Ezra, thank you so much. This is absolutely beautiful. Uh, maybe a nice side note about Royal Assassin. It's one of the only cards that actually has real text in the artwork. And I'm not talking about the autograph of the artist. I'm talking about actual words in the art on Magic Cards. This one has the word pup. Another interesting thing is this is one of these cards that almost looks like it comes from our world, from our plane. So not from Dominaria, but from the real world world art, right? There's a guy drinking some wine in the pub. It's very, it feels very kind of 19th century, right? Doesn't it? And uh, it feels like more something that you could see here in, in, in history here in the world, I mean, on this plane. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit. Sorry for that. Um, Thank you so much. I'm just really happy with this Royal Assassin. Thank you so much, Ezra, uh, for this great booster pack and the other booster and all the cards you've sent my way. You are too, too kind and uh, it's really, really appreciated. I also would like to thank you for watching another Mail Day video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to see more uh, Mail Day videos, if you want to see more uh, booster pack openings, check out my channel. I've got some really cool playlists that show a lot of booster pack openings. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell if you'd like to see more old school magic content. And now we are ready for the end scroll. Let's go.
Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.